So, John, it's it's been a while since we've talked. It was Christmas last time we we had a conversation. I was just looking through through the archives, and you were wearing a Christmas hat, and, and you looked adorable. And yes. um, how, how have you been? Good. Life is. I can't complain too much, though I could if you gave me enough time. <laughs> um, actually, I would like to complain. Uh, oh. Being an adult is difficult sometimes. The obligations, mm. the responsibilities. The maintenance on your house, the paying of a water bill, the, the just the the multitude of things that factor in. But we're not talking about those today, are we? No, we're, we're not. We're going to be talking yeah. about some other things. But okay, <laughs> I, I did want to just say hello, everybody. Welcome back to the OMB podcast, where I am joined once again by my beautiful co-host, the wonderful, the beautiful, the sensual, the majestical, the mystical, the magical, and of course the sexual uh john the flip flickinger john how's it going uh it's going well now um it's good good, man good to be here it's good to talk about things again and hang out this is our excuse to hang out yeah absolutely this is the excuse that i give i give to my wife i'm like yeah i'm gonna go talk with go talk with another man for a couple hours i need to have a play date with my buddy in the basement (laughs) i I I, played it with this man i talked to strange men on the internet (laughs) but we're making content so it's justified yes but we're we're recording it yeah we have have witnesses that nothing (laughs) absurd happened (laughs) and some people are watching it we don't know who those people are necessarily but they they seem to be coming back and they seem to be enjoying it they enjoy what these two men do together (laughs) whatever that's worth and speaking of coming back that's one of the first things that i want to talk about uh, tonight, because there are there's a plethora of stuff that I would love to talk about. Of course, uh, as many of you know, if you uh, if you watch the main channel, we we just announced all of the uh, Wednesday Raven Award nominations. I'm kind of just shortening it to the Ravens. Uh, it's our Oscars boycott that we host every single year. A lot of really awesome categories, a lot of awesome nominations, and of course, to no surprise, my my video got uh, copyright claimed because uh-huh. I had a couple of sizzle reels of of the you know one liners and action sequences. And uh, I've already tried to, you know, dispute them and have already gotten one back already. It was footage from the Northmen, even though it was like cut up. So like it would show like maybe 10 seconds and they would fade to another part of it. And it's only about a minute of the actual video that's over an hour and 45 minutes. You know, it's, you know, is what it is. But with all that being said, speaking of things that just don't seem to be going away, things that just always seem too good to be true. Let's talk about movie pass. Because, oh um, man! Yeah, uh, it's 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 here. It's 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 you know it's never going away. I mean, for anyone who's followed me for a long time, one of my actually my first official video on on my channel was actually Movie Pass. It was when things were starting to hit the fan, and I was one of the few voices like initially calling out Movie Pass for being just a complete like Ponzi scheme, just like. A, a complete just just cluster and this was before things got even even worse like before people started to like you know before they went bankrupt and they uh had charged a bunch of people and and then people started having movies just go away and and all this other stuff but it's back and uh they keep rebranding it the original we, we talked about this i know uh several months ago when they first announced it oh no well at this point Oh no, oh, no, it's, it's okay. okay. It's, it's okay. okay. But it's not if if that's what's if that's what's gonna if you know, can you hear it now? No. No, it's good. You're good. It was only one sentence. It, you're good. Oh. We had, we had a no, little echo just, in the voice. No, everything else was great. I just feel like it's gonna sound terrible. No, no, it, it only it only kicked in towards the last like five. It's gonna seconds. sound terrible when you hate me. No, you're oh, beautiful. But anyway, uh what I was just saying, as I was saying. It's already gone through. I mean, first off, there was this very weird announcement, right, of just out of the blue, right? Oh, Movie Pass is coming back, and there's going to be this, this, this apparent speak talk thing, right? Very, very much a Apple like event feeling to it, uh, where the former CEO, like one of the former co founders who had been kicked out initially or kind of pushed out initially from the original company finally actually bought it you know ever since it went bankrupt he rebought it took over ownership of it and he was like i really want to be able to take things to the next level with this and i want to make it to be what it actually is so he tried to give like this keynote style presentation and he had an audience there 
And it made it seem like there were a lot of people there. But then when you would hear like the applause, it sounded like it was just like a handful of people because three people in a garage somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it makes sense because a lot of people were just, you know, screwed out of money and, and, and screwed out of a lot of other things. But I, I will say this much. It does seem like the initial rollout, I would say, was was very, very much what, we, what was to be expected. They were like, hey, this is the day we're going to open up our mailing list. And they were like acting like they were all prepared for it. And it turns out they weren't. It was crashing. Um, you you couldn't sign up for it. It kept giving you error messages and everything like that. And their excuse was it just because so many people wanted to sign up. And it's like, was it that or was it that you just weren't expecting a lot and it was more than you expected? Or were you planning to have it be, you know, to have the system be ready for, for less so that it would crash so that you could, you know, run with that narrative basically. Um, and, and so, but now it's finally here. They, they had a beta phase where they were like every month or so releasing it in a new major city. And I kept looking for post online. I kept looking uh, and you know, in the words of John Campia, I hunted, right? I hunted, <laughs> hunted. you stopped. I hunted for it. Yeah. I just hunted for it and yeah. I couldn't, and I couldn't find any coverage of it. No one was doing coverage of, hey, I have the new movie pass. I'm in the major cities that this is released in. Here's my experience. And that was just really weird to me. Because I was like, mm. you're releasing it in major cities where you're going to have at least a few people. And I'm sure some of them are going to be like people that would actually want to record or something. And it was it was nothing. And then all of a sudden, you know, I've been waiting and waiting. And then just yesterday, they were like, oh, by the way, today we are going to uh, we're going to unleash the beta for everybody. And over the course of that day, the the website had updated like four or five times. So it seemed like it was like a random decision. Like they were just like, you know what? Let's just open it up now. Oh, wait, they need to have access to information. So like, for instance, when, when they first did it, I went to the website and it was still like, I think, MoviePass, maybe it was listed as MoviePass Beta. But I remember when they had the first relaunch, it was MoviePass 2.0. Right. So they've already rebranded MoviePass Beta. And then they didn't have this information on there. This was also something I had to hunt for because I was like, okay, how much is it going to cost? And how many credits am I getting? And what's that going to actually look like? Because initially it just said the, you know, um, like the three to seven movies. It didn't have the credits. Oh, so the, the, yes, there's so the, the all you got was are going to come into play here. Yeah, yeah. And it said, oh, three to seven movies. And I was like, oh, but 70. Uh, so for one, it just said three to seven movies. It didn't say how many credits you got per month. So so that was something that didn't show up right away. Um, and then the other thing, too, that they didn't have was, OK, what does you know, what do actual tickets look like? And so they didn't have this breakdown on there either. And so apparently it's, you know, and also on the app. Before you register, which means before you actually put your credit card information in, it was showing up as 35 credits per movie. Oh. And I was like, wait a minute. That doesn't sound right. That seems weird. And then as soon as I signed up, all of a sudden then this showed where it was 10, 10 credits for the matinee and then 15 credits for the weekday uh, evening. And now apparently it's also 20 credits for, for the weekend, you know, Week prime time. Will you go back up, please? Now I see 20 credits for the weekend. That changes a lot of things here because now yeah. if you get the basic, if it's 20 credits for a weekend, you basically get to see one movie a month because you, 10 can't, bucks. you can't really do. And then you have 14 left. So then Which go means to, you can see a movie during the week. So it actually see, ends up okay. being a decent deal if you go you can, see two movies. Well, no, no, no. That, no, that's a terrible deal. And I'll tell you why. No. Oh. So you're going to be able to say on the weekend when most people go to see the new movie, you get to see that one new movie on the weekend. Cool. Yeah. But then you have to see the next new movie on a weekday. You can't go on the weekend if you have the basic plan. So now you no, get no, two no. movies a month for the basic plan. You get to see one on the weekend, but the next big movie it has to be on a weekday. But here's the thing, all right? Because obviously they also make it very clear that this excludes uh, New York, LA. Uh, okay. They have a whole, se and I actually do appreciate this. They give you an entire separate tier. So the the base price is ten dollars higher, um, and you get more credits because obviously it's just it's insane. How, like, right. But also look, forty credits. Yeah. For for a weekend, but it makes sense because. It's just so much more expensive in those cities. Um, but no, but like the reason why it still makes sense to me and why I think it's still a good deal ultimately if it works. And again, this is the reason why. So I bought it, as I mentioned earlier, I, I got the standard plan uh, because I want to test this. I, I bought it so that you don't have to. So I 
unlike everyone else who has just not been covering this, I will be making coverage of once I get my card in, how long it takes for the card to actually come in. They say it's going to you know, be like 10 business days or whatever. So I'll be able to be able to actually keep track of that. I'll be able to keep track of whether or not it actually works at the theater itself. Again, as you can see right now, it's just standard 2D showing. So it does not include any of the other um, you know, premium formats, even though to me it's like, well, if the credits seem to have a numerical value to it, why not just, you know, I think over time they might start to open that up, but obviously it's, it's a, it is a beta, right? And so who knows how long the beta is going to last. I think it's going to last for a long time. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. But the reason why it's a good value, getting back to that, if you spend $10 a month, all right, how much is a standard movie ticket even during the week? $10? Yes. Okay. So you get to see a, week, a weekend movie, which is what, somewhere... Twelve, fifteen dollars. Uh huh. And then you get to see a weekday movie. Sure. So you get to see two new movies if you want. You could also see an older film too during the week. So you are actually getting a pretty decent return. Now you do still have to actually see at least the two movies, right? And to use your credits. One other thing too that is also pretty good that they also made clear in their uh, their terms is that credits can roll over, but then oh, they okay. get you. In that it can only roll over basically for like a month. Oh. So I think it's basically if you if one month you don't use the credits, they do roll over. Where, um, but after that, it will then ex- those those first month credits will expire month three basically. Okay. So you can't just like keep you know rolling and you know building up the credits and then try and cancel or anything like that. But I, I at, le- at least they have that. At least that that's like something that is there. Like because let's say you just honestly can't have time to see a movie. Those credits at least don't go to waste, right? At least you still hold sure. on to those credits and then can actually end up seeing more films in in that month and <clears throat> basically making up for it. Now, this is, I think, still going to be difficult to really sell to people because if you have the AMC A-list, that's a, just such a great deal. Three movies every single week. Right. Any format, uh-huh. um, you know, for $21 or so a month for, for that one. Um, but this, I think, is good because this will allow me at least to be able to actually start to utilize the Regal Theater that's near me. Um, which, you know, has the standard ticketing pricing. So that's actually pr- probably what I'm going to use it for is I'm going to try going a couple times to that Regal Theater that has sometimes has other films that are not shown at AMC, um, but it also in- can include other, you know, random tiers. So again, a-, a lot of things, a lot of questions still there, but I guess what are your general thoughts about, about MoviePass and I, I, launching? Well, I think as an individual, the only one that makes sense if you love movies is I would never go higher than the standard 20 a month. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. First of all, there's never going to be a time where there's three to four great movies per month to see. Yep. Maybe two, two tops, maybe three. So I could, I could see the justification for that. And if you have the flexibility, the one thing I would utilize more than anything is I rarely see movies on the weekend. I go Mm -hmm. Thursday night to the late showing of the premiere of the Friday movie that's coming out. Yeah. To me, that's where I would utilize it and get and maybe beat the system that way. Yeah. Um, now I could see if you're married and you and your wife or whatever, go see movies together, then maybe you get the premium. Mm-hmm. I could see that. But as an individual, I would never go past the, uh, the standard. Um, now the reason why yeah. that wouldn't necessarily work is with the premium is it's, it's only per individual person. Oh, so, so you can't even use, you can't buy two movie tickets and use. No, so you're limited. So yeah. So basically oh. it's the same system. Um, again, I haven't used it yet because I still need it to the card, but you go to the theater, just like you did with the old system. Uh-huh. You check the, the, the theater that you want. You have to have your location on so that you can check into the theater. It loads the money essentially onto your card. And then that allows you to use it to buy your ticket. Oh. So it's the same system that they used to have, like even from the very beginning when it was a, a lot more expensive. Um, and, and people still liked it because it gave a lot more flexibility in that way. But here's where I kind of see it as like a use case scenario. I think this would make the $10 basic. So someone like me, where I like to go see movies, I already have the AMC A-list. And so, you know, and, and the other thing too, right, is that AMC A-list, you don't get any rollover credits. You know, you don't get any right. of that, you know, stuff. But you also just get a lot more with it in general. But that $10 a month, it's almost like worth it to me to, it's just to have it because it means that at any given time, even if I miss one month, right, or if I miss consecutive months, it means that I'm going to have 68 credits, because if I never use it and it is able to store like two months of rollover, basically, it means I'll have 68 credits, which means let's say the wife and I want to go out to, to see a movie or let's say that uh, a friend, you know, and I want to go see a movie. I can say, oh, 
by hey, I can get mine with my A-list, and then, hey, I also have this movie pass that can actually cover your ticket. So it, I could see it being that use case because then you're only paying the $10, you know, $10 a month, and you therefore can still get the tickets to go see a couple movies with that person that maybe doesn't see a lot of movies, but will see like one or two a month. Um, and then that way you're not paying $20 twice over for the AMC A-list, basically. No, I, I can see the logic here. I can see yeah. the value. You you basically get a free movie ticket a month, more or less. Yeah. Like, there is yeah. something to be said for it. And sure. Of course, like, again, you have to, you do have to have a plan, right? That's a very specific use case. But at the very least, there there are some things, right? There are some things that um, I could see <laughs> uh, beneficial from this. If it works. That's the right. big key, though, right? right? Is if it works. And as of right now, I don't know if it works because... Again, no one's covering this. The, the technical issue is, is my fear. I'm afraid because I did have movie pass for yeah. a minute back in the day. And I remember multiple times getting to the theater and it would not load. Yeah. And that to me would be the biggest detriment. Now, I, I guess we have 5G and 4G now and it might be better or whatever. But my question is who you're sure for certainty, for a fact that you can only buy one movie ticket per day? Um. Well, well again... Well, like, well, for per movie, uh, I'm pretty sure. You're, uh, you're so we can go to the okay. we can go to their we can go to their fee their FAQs. Because my question to that would be, who is ever getting the premium and the pro to watch 23 movies a month at the theater? So for the pro, <laughs> like, how could you as an individual ever do that? There's so, not there's nothing to see. There's, there's that that's for the person that wants to see every single. Because remember the the whole premise not, of this. There's not even that many. The, the, like there's never in the history of life ever been twenty movies at the theater in a month. But people like to see movies more than once, and and sometimes people like to go see all, like the random uh, independent films that come out. And also, I, I I'm not sure exactly if it's going to work or not. Because the one other thing, the other use case I could see for this is, I don't know if the Fathom events are blacked out. Because AMC mm. A-List blacks those out. Right. So yeah. I'm wondering if if those are not blacked out. Because I again, I don't have a card yet. And I haven't, you know, I've only had it for for just a, a little bit. Um, but I'm kind of wondering if those would possibly uh be included where maybe you pay a higher, you know, you, you have to spend a little bit more uh credits on it, but at the very least it lets it get covered yeah. in, in some capacity. Because when I'm looking at it right now, I, I'm I'm looking and seeing some things that I I'm again I'm not quite sure. It is interesting though, just to just to look at it and uh I'll go ahead and just uh you know pull this down for a second. But here is the uh the app itself. Um so very, very, you know, simplistic. It has the number of credits. So I have the, you know, the twenty the twenty dollar one, so it's seventy two credits. And it tells you like what's the top box office. You click on your location. It tells you what are the you know the nearest theaters that are you know there to you. It tells you whether you can use. So apparently, some areas you can actually buy online. Uh, mm -hmm. Mine, you need the card, and so obviously I've already paid. But you know, apparently, it, it, my actual like start time won't happen until I authorize the card. So okay. I won't have to pay again until after the time and the day that I actually authorize the card itself. Um, but based on, again, what I'm looking at, the interface just seems a lot cleaner and a lot faster than what the original one was. Right. So I already have a lot more like, like, okay, I think that there might be something here, but I have to use it. I have to actually use it to, to figure it out. But, uh, again, I was looking at the, the, the FAQ and everything is all about like, <clears throat> like I, um, like what I do, like, how do I, uh, you know, you know, how do I uh, use it specifically? So it doesn't look like it's it can be used for more than one ticket. But yeah, up to two months of unused credits roll over. So you can have up to 46 credits in your account at any given time. Um, I'm trying to see if there is uh, anything else mentioned. Because um, I think I can send requests out to people who did not get on the wait list uh, to be able to sign up with it. But other than that, uh, yeah. Do you get a referral? Yeah, again, I think I do have referrals. I just have a, again, I haven't dove too deep into it yet, but it is just interesting, right? Because it, it's been, it is something that uh, I remember when it first came out and I thought it was really cool. And this is before AMC A-List. And ever since AMC A-List, it's just been like, that's just one of the best systems out there. Right. Um, but I do, again, I do see a space where this could end up being something really good, especially if you have theaters around you where maybe you don't have AMCs near you, right? And maybe the Regal, near you maybe that because i don't know what their plan is and and how it compares but maybe it's not as good or maybe it's something to 
the effect that there are other theaters that you would rather go to. Like there's one that's like 30 minutes away from me. That's like a regional theater, UEC. Right. And so it's like, I can see myself like, cause they have usually more independent films there. So it's like, Oh, if I ever want to see one of those rare independent films, I have an access to that without having to, you know, pay full price ticket for it. Right. So I don't know. No, I, I can see the benefits. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see the execution. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I would recommend everyone go and check out the, the announcement. Cause it's, I think it's now publicly available, <laughs> but it's just, it is one of the funniest things uh, that I've ever seen because it is so Find, clear. Is there a clip? Find the clip. Let's yeah, exactly. It. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and pull that up because it is just, it's hilarious. It is again, it looks like he, is in a uh, like basement somewhere, a, a and, truck stop, and, yeah, and truck Boise, stop Idaho, and, giving the the press release. Yeah, and I'm trying to see. So actually, it looks like it's actually not public. So you had to be like on the mailing list oh. to. But let me see if I can find it because obviously I watched it. Let me see if I can find it in my in my watch history because it, it sounds like a pyramid scheme or something. The whole thing yeah. it just sounds like it's going to implode on itself in about six months. Well, apparently he's so apparently he is using or he will be utilizing um, like uh, Web three. So like I know at one point in his um, his whole sh- his whole spiel he was talking about how he wants to at at, at, cer- at certain points he wants to have theaters working more directly or studios rather working more directly with the consumer. So like offering like, Hey, if you watch this uh, trailer or if you consume this commercial, you might get chances to get credits. So I think once that expounds a little bit more, I think I could then see it having a little bit more value to it. So I'm just excited because I do like when things like this come along. Mm -hmm. Um, And the guy does seem to at least have a better head on his shoulders. That being said, uh, I did indeed find it. And uh, okay. okay, here it is. <laughs> Today is an exciting day in our industry. Not only were the Oscar nominations announced, but we're also letting everyone on the wait list into the new Movie Pass beta. Thank you for your patience. We previously opened 10 markets, but now we're letting everyone in nationwide. Having been on this crazy journey together, many of you have wondered what really happened at MoviePass. For the first time, I'm breaking my silence in my new book, Black Founder, The Hidden Power of Being (laughs) on sale today, if you're interested. Some said I shouldn't write this book, but I felt you had the right to know the truth about what really happened. As an entrepreneur, I wanted to give back to our community by sharing my journey to help anyone who's ever wanted to own their own business, who shares the love of cinema that we do, the power of storytelling, of hope and perseverance, and never giving up on dreams. We cannot do this without you and just wanted to say thank you. We hope you enjoy the book and the new movie pass. Welcome back. He, he looks, looks like he's being held hostage. Yeah, but especially my book. I want you yeah. to. Re- I, I want hey, you Odin, to. Make before sure. we dive into this, I want to tell you about my new book called Baby I Steps. <laughs> <laughs> many, many said I shouldn't do this, but I went against the grain. Like, I know. It, like I was not it's... expecting that. That was the most un- unintentionally <laughs> hilarious thing. Right there, you you gave this man your money. You're crazy. <laughs> I did. I gave him twenty dollars. You're I gave crazy. Him... <laughs> That's gone, man. He's right. He's going somewhere. He's going to a, a non extrajudicial country, man. With hey, that money. my phone says I have seventy two credits. I don't have a card to use it with yet, but yeah, when yeah. I do, yeah, yeah. Where's your card? Mm. I, I I gotta wait uh, some days. Uh, D- I think, it's... but but there's no exact date given. They said ten. It said uh, okay. ten on okay. the uh, yeah All on right. the FAQ. Let's see. Yeah. How does it work? Let me see if it has the. Da, 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 da. Where is the? Where is the trigger? Rachel. There you go. Rachel. Um. So he he gave the press release in his bedroom with a webcam. There it is. So just, uh, how long will it take for my movie pass card to get here? Your movie pass card will arrive within ten business days of your sign up. Your account will renew one month after you've abdicated your card. So. I should be getting in about nine days. Okay, all right. So by uh, by next week, I should I should be getting it. Business uh, days, though you have business, business days. days yeah. yeah, so that might be about two weeks. <laughs> and sorry, what what, were you, what had you been saying? What, what was the name of his book again? I'm sorry. Oh yeah, Black 
it was what was it black man or i thought black power <laughs> or something i know black black creator or something like that uh, okay um yeah i just was not expecting that yes neither was i and also I... it's it's a little hard it was a little hard to hear but his microphone was peaking yes so the entire time it's just like bro you're trying to come across as legit and you're you're filming this like basement <laughs> This is like Basically, Tommy Wiseau yeah. giving you financial advice. Yeah. Like, are you, are, and then also his microphone is is peaking, so it's clearly something that was not fully planned out, was no. not ready. Oh, it was just oh, I just had to I had to share that. I really well, did. Well, thank you for that. That was Yeah. That was better than I thought it would be, to be honest with you. <laughs> you're, well, you're welcome. With my new book. <laughs> with my new book. And then I love how like more than half of the video is him in the book not yes. the movie pass no no up. no no like information about how it's going to work the logistics nope. what servers are using their developers nope. their coding the improvements be like you have to read his book if you want the insight to and find the out what really happened with right. movie pass and because of it clearly having a racial bent to it i bet that that's probably going to be a big part of it is i was pushed out of it because i was a black man and, i mean uh, that's a, who knows that's a possibility but yeah, i mean you never know but um well yeah and uh with that being said let's talk about some happier things um so i've really become a, a very appreciative so we, we you know speaking of movie pass right it's a it's another <laughs> subscription right it's yes. a subscription yes and we have subscription f fatigue and, and i'm feeding into that system right okay. yeah, i'm a part are. of the problem john you are I'm a part of the problem you are but you know what there, there's one out there there's one system out there that actually has shown itself to has some pretty good content. I don't think the interface and the actual system is is actually the best out there. It takes a while for like the HDR and HD to like kick in uh, when you're watching it on on the TV. But uh, Paramount Plus, mm, okay. Paramount Plus, right? Really, for most of its existence, has really only been known for what having uh, what Star Trek, Yellowstone, Trek maybe, <laughs> and then Yellowstone, of course, was yeah. was a big one on there. Maybe I'm thinking of something else for for Star Trek, um, but. Ultimately, it was really just known for that, but it has so many really good shows on it now. Most of them are written by the same guy, Taylor Sheridan, who is a brilliant uh, writer. He did Sicario. He did Wind River. He did Hell or High Water. Like He's done a lot of really good films, and now he's shown himself to be like the king of, of streaming television because he's got Yellowstone. There was then a prequel called 1883. That right. was released and is like in the season two. And then like not long after that, 1923 got greenlit, which is also a prequel to Yellowstone, but a sequel to 1883. Uh-huh. That's uh -huh. amazing. That's brilliant. Right. How That's far brilliant. does this go? Yeah, like I can't wait. It's like, oh, what are we gonna have like 1953 next? Like, it, like the it, shared get... universe of some small town. I know. Okay, it's, it's really awesome just to see that. But yeah, there great. are a couple of shows that I've actually been able to watch because I really want to dive into the Yellowstone uh, universe because I've heard a lot of great things about it, and I do like Tara, Taylor Sheridan's work. And so I think you know to kind of get my my feet a little bit wet. There was one show I wanted to watch first because I had a genuine interest in the subject matter. I, had you heard of the show The Offer about the making of the Godfather? I have not, but maybe I have, but that sounds really intriguing. Yes. Miles Teller actually okay. stars in it. Um, there's a couple other actors too, that you, you'll be able to, to recognize the, the guy that plays um, the director of the Godfather is, is um, one who has been in, in a lot of other films. He was Coppola. unfortunately, yeah. yeah, Coppola. He, he unfortunately was uh, the actor was in the fantastic beast movies. Uh, he mm -hmm. plays the the human who's in love with the witch. Um, right, he's really yes. funny. Yeah, he yeah. was in also the one that I love. The, my my favorite film of his career is is probably actually a, a little film called uh, Balls of Fury, which is all about ping pong. Uh, right. Uh huh. With, yeah. Uh, with uh, you got a taste good. Uh, <laughs> is that who you're talking about? No, the guy, I, I the guy about from... What was that? Who who were you, which actor? What is his name? Who, you what know, is his... uh, my name is I could do his Christopher voice. Walken. Christopher Walken. He okay. plays the villain, and he's supposed to be Asian, but he's Christopher Walken. So he stars in the offer. No, no, no. So, so the so yeah, not Christopher Walken. I'm so confused. The, the guy who is the ping pong player in that movie with Christopher Walken, Dan Fogler. Dan Fogler. Yeah, I, I was forgetting his name. He was in Fanboys. Yes. Yes. So he's been he's been in other things. So you would recognize him. But he plays Coppola. And he does a really good job. Okay. But, I could see that. But it's a really really good show. 
because I never actually knew all of the drama of what happened behind the scenes to get that movie made. I had no idea. And obviously whether or not all of it's true or, you know, what's true and what's not true. But I think that a lot of it is, is based in reality. And so I had no idea the mob was involved in the making of the movie. Um, I had no idea that um, Frank Sinatra, I didn't realize, I didn't realize rather (laughs) how much Frank Sinatra was involved with like the mafia and like having connections. Oh yeah. 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 He, He was their buddy. Yeah. And um, and like the way they portray how mad he is when he finds out that there's a book where the vic- the kid the character of Fontaine in the book is is supposedly like based off of him or oh. at least that's what everyone said. Oh, it's great. Um, I highly recommend it. And again, if you like if you love movies, if you love behind the scenes stuff, and if you if you also you're a big fan of The Godfather and just kind of are intrigued by, I wonder. Yeah, wait, there's drama behind how it was made. I kind of want to find. It's amazing that this film ever even got made like all of the pieces and parts that had to fall into place and truly the passion of, of not just Coppola, but the producer, like, cause really that's what the story is. The story is about the producer of the Godfather and all the things that he had to go through in order to get this, this movie made. It's brilliant. So um, that's the, the one I started off with. And it's again, it was a limited series. So it was just the, the one season and I think it's great. So if you have Paramount Plus, man, I would definitely recommend checking out uh, the offer. Oh no, yeah, I love things about the making of movies or the backstory. Yep. Now, did you is, did you say Taylor Sheridan's attached to this? Is, no, was he a I was saying no? I was okay. saying to dip my toes into Paramount Plus right. and the library. That was the one that I had heard a lot of things about. I'd heard a lot of good things about it. I, I love Miles Teller and I like The Godfather. So I was like, okay, come on, dive further into this. Do you know who would make a good Marlon Brando? I mean, he's he's a little above a Paramount Plus show, but yeah. Tom Hardy looks like young Marlon Brando. Oh, good shout. Yeah. He really does. Yeah. Well, the guy they get to play does a really good job. Like a yeah. lot of the the oh, the guy they get to play Pacino is 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 almost it's it's comically perfect. But is it a little too hyper uh, impersonation or is it very subtle? It's it's a it's a bit of a mix. Is it it's it's hyper- what are you doing over here? No, no, no. It's it's young yeah. Pacino. It's oh, before he got all Pacino. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Because this is the other thing, too, that I, I didn't know. I didn't know that this was like his first major film role. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like because yeah, he, had didn't want a, he had they been didn't a want theater, yeah. he had been a yeah. theater actor. And so I didn't know that. And so he he's very timid. He's very timid. Mm. He's very quiet. And um, so it was really cool to see that. But yeah, he, he's he's putting on like this voice. I can't even I can't do a like a young Pacino voice. Yeah. But he does it very well. And it, the look he has. So all the casting I thought was done very well. I thought that they all kind of fit the roles that they were supposed to. Um, but oh my goodness, dude, I think that you would might actually love it because you like those behind the scenes, uh, right. stories that go into it. No, so, uh, you sold me on it. I, yeah. why is no one talking about this? Because you want to know why Paramount plus it's on Paramount plus. Exactly. Uh, exactly. The same and place right now, that the halo series, right? Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. was that, I thought it was Netflix. I thought it was halo. No, I think that was Paramount plus I had the halo series. I don't yeah. know about that. Maybe yeah. you can maybe you can look up look, look that up, but yeah, because other than the Taylor Sheridan stuff, like that was one of the other ones, uh, one of the other shows that I had known had gotten a lot of attention, and so then from there I had been getting some recommendations from people about uh, some of the other shows that he had done, and so I decided to start a show that is relatively new that came out just this past year mm-hmm. that stars Sly Stallone, and it's called Tulsa King. Okay, I've heard of this. Okay, and by the way, it was on Paramount Plus. Continue. Okay. Yeah. Hey, well, hey, shout out to you. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, not known for having all the greatest things, but offer fan, phen- phenomenal. Tulsa King. All right. So, the general story is Stallone was a uh, a mafia or again, a part of a mafia family basically, mm-hmm. and he was a, like he was a capo, right? He was he was one of like the generals of right. of this family. He served 25 years for a murder that right at this point it seems like he he didn't actually commit the murder. Uh, but he served the time anyway to protect like the family. Right. But now he's out mm-hmm. and he's expecting to be taken care of because he you know, served the time. He kept his mouth shut and everything. Uh, but instead he gets brought back and there's a lot of like distrust being shown. Obviously a lot's changed over 25 years as well. And he's no longer the big shot capo that he once was, but that's the kind of world that he's trying to go back into. And so he ends up getting sent to, to Tulsa. So he gets sent by the big boss boss to Tulsa. Basically, Seemingly and straightforwardly to be put out of the way, basically, right. like saying, all right, we don't, we don't want you here. There's no real place for you here anymore. And uh, we want you to to kind of you know keep low in, in Tulsa. And so basically he just enters. So you have 
him, uh, Stallone, who does a great job playing this mob guy, uh, like mob boss who comes into Tulsa and then he just takes it over basically he starts like running it like the kingpin of tulsa Oklahoma. exactly like so again tulsa king literally is he, and so i'm thinking about this and i'm like taylor sheridan just came up with this idea and it works and no, it and, sounds and, cool yeah. and it has again i think stallone's the perfect casting for it and there's just it's very it's very well done i'm like seven or eight episodes into the first season which just got released this past year and i'm loving it it's it's fantastic is it filmed like, is it stylistically filmed? Does it look very cinematic? Uh, or does it feel kind of like say, a TV show? It, it feels, so it has the cuts of a TV show, like mm -hmm. where like there's a natural breaks that occur. Right. Right? And I think that's a lot of these uh, shows on platforms, especially that try to offer different tiers. And oh. I, I don't know if Paramount Plus is one that has ad supported tiers or not. Okay. Um, but so it feels like a TV show in okay. that capacity, but it's shot very well. It looks great. It, it it's and again the fact that Stallone's in it already I think just raises the level of. It, it, I'm gonna be honest. If it was almost anyone else, I wouldn't be that enticed. But the fact that Stallone, I think it'll at least have that presence where I can believe him being this imposing figure in this small town. But I like how he went to prison for 25 years and learned nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna get out and can. I'm gonna get out and, and commit a, a federal crime. Yay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then there's like a beginning scene where he has, you know, he, you know, goes home with somebody, and then that person ends up being someone where it's like, oh boy. Oh. Um. Oh. And I'll tell you, and I guess spoilers for anyone who's 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 watching, but it turns out he sleeps with like a ATF agent, and uh, <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> oh, but it's great. It's it's just honestly is is great because uh, it's great to see Stallone in in just good stuff like that, that that's well written does, does he still have a heart of gold though in a way yeah yeah, yeah. okay like because he's doing these things but at the same time you're just like yeah you get it stallone yeah you okay. get it man cool yeah cool. you're on his side you just support you like you 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 are on his side and you want him to succeed basically he has he has a moral compass but he's still a villain exactly okay so it's the kind of character that you you would probably oh, i love it with. sounds great oh yeah absolutely so Paramount Plus, again, it has Tulsa King and has the offer and then it has the other Taylor, Taylor Sheridan works. And so Tulsa King especially has really sold to me like, OK, now I really want to dive into these other shows because I think that uh, there could be just a lot of other things that, um, you know, that that could be really good and could, again, just really want to dive into them. Um, but there's another show, too, that's just recently launched. And I, I kind of want to know, have you started watching on, on HBO Max The Last of Us? I have. I meant to. I, I wanted to talk about that on my yeah. podcast, but I forgot. I literally forgot. Yeah. I have, and I am enjoying it. I mm -hmm. like that it's focusing on characters and emotion. And the great thing is, I never played the. I played the game for like maybe two hours once. Yeah. And I know the ending, but nevertheless, I do enjoy the slow burn of the mm -hmm. series and and how it it's taking itself serious and and not feeling like a, a crappy video game movie or TV show. So it's, yeah. I like it so far. Yeah, so far it's a, it's a fantastic adaptation. Um, and, and if it continues on, it might be the best video game adaptation that we've ever gotten. Um, well, and, no, 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 nothing tops Mortal Kombat 1995. Okay, <laughs> but that's in a very special place. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. No, no, nothing else is ever ever gonna be able to top the sure, yeah. 95 Mortal Kombat. Continue movie. Mortal yeah. Kombat. There's, like no, the there's not enough alone. techno music in Last of Us. Okay, exactly. Okay, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I very similar. I, I I never actually played the game myself, but I remember it was I think Pooty Pie when he was doing his full game plays. Yeah. I watched every episode that he did because the mm. game just looked really interesting, and right. of course I, I loved Pootie Pie's commentary. Um, and so I know a lot about the story and a lot about the characters, and I think that's also probably why I have one issue with the show so far. And that's, I don't think the young actress that they have as Ellie is Ellie. Like, it d d does not come across in in the same way at all as as the girl and the character that's presented in the game. I don't, I honestly don't think that was good casting. No, I, and I would agree. But on the internet, if you say that, they say, oh, you, oh, you wanted a cute girl as a, a 30 year old man. What's wrong with you, you weirdo? But no, there's a certain reason you cast people that look a certain way if you're going to make a direct adaptation adaptation mm -hmm. some of now i'll say this even my girlfriend who watched it yeah didn't like the casting choice as well something about the demeanor just isn't right yeah but i will say with her attitude in the show the way they're making her almost a little i, I didn't play the game that much but her attitude in the show and her look 
in my opinion, kind of coincide that yeah. I don't know if in the game she's more helpless. No, she's, she, she's, she's, she's not, she has attitude. Okay. She has okay. attitude in the game. Okay. Um, I, it's just, again, it's just the way it's presented that, that is, the it feels distant. It feels forced. Yeah. And, and it really comes yeah. down to, because I actually, I thought, I think the actress is very talented because right. she was very good. I, I mean, lady, she's one of the few lady, what's yeah. her face on game of Thrones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, lady, lady torment. Uh, she kind of, you know, she looks like a 40 year old lady trapped in a little girl's body or something like it, there's something about that. Yeah. If they ever do another orphan film, she could play the character. There you the are. Girl yeah. Or, yeah. Oh, that movie. Anyway, uh, but no, this show, um, but, you know, getting back to, to her character specifically, because it's not a bad performance. She's not giving a, a, a no. bad performance by any means. It's just when I, I think about the character and I think about the game, it just comes across very different. And this is one of the many reasons why I tend to watch things before reading or watch things before mm -hmm. anything else. Because I, I feel like you're able to appreciate things more when you go that route versus the I have an expectation. Now that expectation has not been met. And so now is it really bad and not working? Are they really not gelling as well as I think that they are? Or is that just my perception because I'm I, I'm expecting a certain kind of relationship? You know, um, it's hard to say. It's, it's hard to be able to really uh, parse that through. Yeah, I'd be curious to know people with the criticism towards it and i i would maybe i have the same i don't know but like who would be the ultimate casting choice for that role yeah who would be a better replacement i i don't know yeah. I'd, like to, I'd like to see the list yeah i will say i think pedro pascal is great job I, I think that he has the look of the character i think the other thing too i mean pedro pascal unfortunately is is a bit of a, a tool in real life i just it's one of those he's he's a constant reminder that just one of the worst things about social media is that now you know what all actors and directors and producers think. So about it taints their performances where you're trying yeah, to get lost so, in their character. Yeah. And I will say yeah. I'm actually lucky in that I, and, and it's something that I understand some people can't do this and I completely understand why I am actually able to separate art from the artist in mm -hmm. most cases. Sure. Um, and so <clears throat> when it comes to him, for instance, when I look at unbearable weight of massive talent, I just watched that with my wife the other day because I had seen it already once in theaters and I liked it. I thought it was fun. Mm -hmm. But then rewatching it, I was like, I forgot how much fun this film actually was. And the relationship between Pedro Pascal and Nick Cage is just really good. The chemistry between them, is especially, but also what Pedro Pascal is able to bring to characters, which is he brings a likability. Right. It's a lot. It's a likability that he lacks in real life, but he, he has it on screen. And so in, in the show, right, for The Last of Us, he still has that. You're like, oh, I care about this character already. And a lot of that's because of the of the performance that Pedro's, you know, Pedro Pascal's giving. Um, so I think that was a great casting. And I think uh, so far the rest of the casting has been has been pretty spot on, has been pretty good just from my own memory, mm -hmm. um, which is, again, not much with the game, having not played it myself. Um, but so far I'm enjoying it too. I like the slow burn too. I think that it's, again, it's a good type of slow burn that's going on. Um, I, I, I also like the other things I take issue with. I don't remember these other cutscenes that are happening like prior to the outbreak. Yeah, the backstory, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because some of the some of that stuff is a little bit like some of it's on the nose. Like it's you yeah, know, like talking about like oh the next pandemic and it's just like uh, okay, you're trying to bring in a little bit too much of like what's happened now and just bomb it all. That, that's yeah. what I would have said though during right before oh, yeah. COVID. Yeah, just bomb it all. Just yeah. nuke 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 it. Done. I don't care. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I would you let me ask you this though. Yeah. I like Pedro Pascal. He's sort of being typecast at this point in his uh, career. Mm -hmm. The emotionally unavailable protector of a child. Soft spoken. Right. Uh, but would you rather see Carl Urban in the role? I feel like both him yeah. and Pedro Pascal have a very similar the career path. Yeah. Career path and, yeah. and capability too, because yeah. they do have range. I mean, think about him, Pedro Pascal in game of Thrones, mm -hmm. right? It was a very different character. Yeah. You have, of course, uh, Carl Urban, you have him. Yeah. He's all over the place though. Cause you have oh, yeah. him in the boys, mm -hmm. which is hilarious. You then also have him as dread, which mm -hmm. is phenomenal. Um, I don't really, what are some roles of his that, that, that have him as like a soft spoken, I don't know. Well, he was kind of a kooky guy in Thor Ragnarok with a, but not soft spoken, not, not, not like a caretaker. I think he mm. could pull it off because I think he's a talented actor. But I do think I think Pedro fits his role a, a bit better. But okay. I could I could definitely see him being able to. I I could see Urban having the range to be able to pull off a character like right. this. Yeah, 
but yeah, so far I'm yeah. I'm enjoying it too, and it's it's again it's good to have a, a good show on HBO. Like the it's another surprise too, right? Because we we had the Game of Thrones spinoff, House of the Dragon, which wasn't perfect. It had issues with it, but it's like oh my goodness, I thought this was going to be a train wreck, and the fact that it was not is is already like <laughs> you're way above. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When it comes to series on HBO, you always have to give them the benefit of the doubt. I mean, yeah. more nine out of ten times, they're going to they're gonna do it right. Yeah. Um, and it, you know what the other thing I enjoy about HBO? What's that? Is they sparse out their series on a weekly schedule. Mm. I love that. I love digesting each episode and looking forward to it next week. I don't want to binge all this in a night. Mm. I think that's the best thing that HBO does with their series. Yeah, I'm like I'm in between on that because that's a debate oh, that's had it's, been, it's, a, it's a debate that we've had several times on Friday Night Tights. OK, um, but like it's the binge model versus the weekly release. And I think that there's a benefit to both because mm-hmm. I think there's some shows that benefit greatly from the binge model. But then there's also like shows like this that I think help build up the anticipation Um but the problem, too, and I think the reason why there might be more people now who would rather binge than not is because of the eighth season of Game of Thrones. Because okay. if you think about it, think about the amount of time that you invested. It's not just about the time the show lasts. It's about, no, 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 the weeks in between episodes. That's time invested as well because you're thinking about what's going to happen. You're thinking about what has happened. And then for that, eight seasons in, for them just to be like, screw you, basically – and just make all of that time a complete waste. That I think is another reason why some people might be like, I don't want to invest that amount of time into a show. If I'm just going to get disappointed, I'd rather have it binged or at least have it all released at the same time so that I can get commentary on whether it's worth watching and investing the time in. So it's again, it's one of those things where it's like, I I think the time difference would be the same because even if you could binge each season in one night, it's still going to take a year or two in between those seasons so what? So if you got seven great seasons and then the eighth was disappointing, you still waited that many years to get to the eighth season either way. Even no, no, if you no. could binge each season in one night. True. When you first also, originally came a out. lot of these shows are not lasting nearly as long as what Game of Thrones right. did. So I, again, I think it's it's also a men, it's a yeah. mental thing too yeah. to a certain extent. Um, but yeah, so very good show. And so just wanted to talk about the Paramount plus shows and, and, and of course the last of us. So we'll go ahead and dive into the, uh, the Q and a, and let me go ahead and uh, refresh it because I thought I got a notification that there was possibly another, uh, post, but, uh, maybe I was mistaken. Let me, uh, double check that. Cause I saw that there was a post from a supporter. Okay. And I was not sure where that post was. So I want to make sure that. I'm not going to be skipping over anything like that. So let me just see. Don't skip it. I'm going to try not to. Let's see. What post is this on? Oh, okay. Sorry. He was, he was commenting on another episode. Okay. Oh, right. So John the Carney though, uh, again, someone who supports both of our channels, shout out to you. Good, sir. Uh, he's going to get us started off today. Again, not too many, uh, uh just, uh, two people, uh, but you know, series of questions here. So first off, John the Carney says, what's up? Uh, what's going on? Odin and John here. Are my questions. Uh, first, what is your favorite sequence in the matrix? Ooh, man. Uh, probably the first Matrix. I, I really do enjoy the Kung Fu scene. I know mm-hmm. Kung Fu. And then they, you know, have a great fight. That's one. But if I had to pick one, ooh, man, you go first. I, I got a couple. I'm trying to, I'm trying to. It says sequence, not action sequence. So I'm actually yeah. going to go with the conversation between Morpheus and Neo. Okay. I love that every love single time. What is real like like that whole yes. like going into basically allegory of the cave uh, and and then him waking up i love that entire sequence do you want to see how deep the rabbit hole the really goes? goes yeah you know that's Take not the bad red pill i do i do like that as well yeah i you know i'll agree with you on that one awesome uh keep one lose one last action hero or predator you know, I know the right answer to this, as I think anyone with critical thinking skills does, but yeah. I have more fond memories of Last Action Hero than I do Predator, to be truthful with you. I'm going to agree with you, because uh, I-, <laughs> I was introduced to Last Action, Last Action Hero because of one of your Blu-ray collection videos. Really? Because you, kept, you would talk about it and talk about how great it was, and I was like, oh, it was like $5 on Blu-ray, I bought it, watched it, and I was like, 
How did I never see this before? It's actually it's underrated. Great. It's great. It's so underrated. Yeah, it was ahead of its time. I think Predator is by far the better movie. But yeah. Last Action Hero, if you like movies, mm-hmm. it, it's 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 like um, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Uh, self aware. Self aware. The, there's another like a love letter to action. Oh, movies. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. Uh, thoughts on either Sylvester Stallone's Cobra or Cliffhanger. P.S. Cobra is a cool concept, but is executed poorly. I've never seen both, but I know that you've probably seen. So both. Cobra had a lot of production issues. Mm-hmm. Essentially, Stallone ended up directing the movie uncredited, more or less, because he was in control of everything. It's dark. It's weird. It's creepy. There's a cult that murders people in it. it it's a dark movie. It mm-hmm. pushes the limitations. Cliffhanger is a fun action flick. I, if I had to pick one to rewatch, I'd probably go with Cliffhanger. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Have you seen Babylon? If so, what are your thoughts? It wasn't good in uh, Jonathan Carney's opinion. I have. Okay. So first of all, I was going to go see it. I almost did. And then from like eight people who, and some of these people love everything. Yeah. They're like, yeah, man, it was a mess. Oof. Don't see it. And then it sounds like that's the general consensus. It was the three hour mess of cocaine and infu- induced nothingness. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I heard it got some Oscar contention of I course don't know. it did Margot I, don't Robbie's got, in it. I don't think it got any like major categories right. necessarily but uh just the fact that it's even within the same breath of of oscars from what i've heard as well I, i've also heard the same thing that it's just not very good and it's really sad i'm so saddened by that because yeah. what the hell happened to this director dude every movie he's made since whiplash has progressively gotten worse that is the truth <sighs> It's I mean, truth. I would disagree to an extent because I do prefer First Man to La La Land. I did not like La La Land. See, I disagree, and but yeah. I don't, I don't love either. Yeah, but I don't like either. I, I don't like either, either. But yeah. I just First Man to me was ugh, what a waste. First of an Man idea. to me, the thing that gets me is that the only thing I can remember about the movie is how bad the cinematography is in the shuttle. The the shaky cam is just mm-hmm. it's nauseating. It, it's but, it's just. Well, I, inducing. I get what they were going for though. Oh, me but. too. But like, like there's a point where it's like, it's done for a, a certain effect. And then another where it's like, okay, but now you're going to make your audience sick. And that's not a good thing. Right. You know, uh, thoughts on the HBO show Velma and how it's getting absolutely destroyed everywhere. Um, yeah, I, I was supposed to have watched it for Friday night tights and I refuse, uh, because it just looks gosh awful. And I, as I've always said, I go out of my way to not watch terrible things or what things seem that seem to be terrible. Yeah, I, I I don't even if it's the most what are the, the people's woke show or whatever it is. I just I don't want to watch a Velma show, even if it's the best Velma sh- version of a show it ever could be. I don't yeah. want to see a Velma show. Sorry. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Uh, and then we already talked about The Last of Us. It says, yeah. that'll be it for me. Hey, thank you very much, John the Carney, for always uh, asking questions. I always appreciate it, man. And then this was from the, the Discord servers. This is from Garrett Searles. Shout out to you, Garrett. Thank you for leaving a couple comments there. He says, I really watched the original Dracula film from 1931, mostly because of a podcast I listened to was doing a show about it. The movie was all right, but I wanted to know what both of you thought of it. Uh, Bella Lugosi set the standard for all Dracula movies going forward, and every actor who's taken uh, one uh, on the role owes him a huge set of degrees. Attitude. Uh, well, thanks for that first question. I uh, I've actually never really been a fan. Uh, and it's not that I think that they're bad. It's just I've never been drawn to the classic um, Universal monster films. To be perfectly honest, so um, I think Bela Lugosi absolutely is a very talented guy. I think that he sets the standard for a lot of different things, um, similar to a couple of other actors of of that era and generation, or, or just slightly before. But um, yeah, I don't really. Yeah, I I. I I don't even remember if I've seen the entire film all the way through in my life. Maybe I, I have. Maybe I, I haven't. I honestly don't remember. I have not. Uh, I definitely have not. Yeah. Um, I, I always liked the concept of the classic monster films. I like the concept of like black and white. They're pure. It's just here's what it is. But the, watching them sometimes you're like, oh, this is kind of like mm, not enough. Yeah. You know, in 1931, watching that in whatever cinema, I think it would have been amazing. Mm hmm. But I, yeah, so I, I've never watched it. Yeah. And again, no, no disrespect to those films at all. Um, but I just, yeah, I've just never been drawn to the universal horror films. Uh, just, or the universal monster movies just never been my thing. 
Uh, do you guys think, uh, do you guys find back uh, black and white movies harder to watch than color ones? When I was watching Dracula, my fiance said she was having trouble focusing on the movie because of the lack of color. I never had that problem. To me, a movie is good if it's got a good story and characters and an interesting conflict, regardless of color or not. Though it was an interesting perspective, she never fails to make me think more critically. Thanks for answering. Well, first off, that is a very interesting perspective. And I wouldn't be surprised if there are people that, that automatically, when they see black and white, their mind shifts. Um, because I think it's also that mindset of black and white. Oh, this is older. Oh, now my mindset has to change, right? Because it's a different time, a different era. It's older. So that means it might be more boring, right? That's the perception that some people might have, um, that might click into their mind. But yeah, I've never had issues, uh, a film being a black and white. I mean, more recently, um, uh, this is the last like full black and white film I can remember. Um, I no, no, I actually no, that wouldn't be true. Uh, Belfast, I think was mm-hmm. black and white and that was really good. Um, but the one that I think most people know is the artist, right? Cause that was a silent film that was made. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I really actually enjoyed that one a lot, but yeah, one of my favorite films of all time is, is black and white. I, I, I love Casablanca. It's one of my all time favorites. 12 Angry Men is also, I think also black and white. Yeah. And, and then all, it's wonderful life. All top of my, my three top favorite films of all time are all black and white. Right. So yeah, I don't, I don't really have issues with the black and white per se. No, you got Schindler's list. If you want a newer mm-hmm. film, yeah. yeah. The, uh, artistically speaking though, sometimes the black and white lends itself to fit the story. Uh, then you have uh, the lighthouse that came out just yes. a couple of years ago. Um, but 1931, they just simply didn't have color film stock. So that's yeah. the reason. But as far as your girlfriend being instantly bored by it, maybe, I see I'd have to dive into her psychological being like is her favorite genre comedy movie. So she Mm. needs something bright, vibrant with some levity. When you go into a black and white film, your mind instantly thinks this is serious. Yeah. So that could be another thing. But no, I think sometimes that going back and watching a classic film in black and white, I like it's almost like uh, getting in a time machine and going Mm -hmm. back that the aspect of that is what I like about it. Oh, yeah. I like it always feels more authentic to me. Yeah, Like if I watch a new big action movie, no, don't put that in black and white. That's wrong. Yeah. But something more simplistic in another time period. I love that. I love the encapsulation of oh, yeah. viewing it the way it originally was presented. Well, that's why even like original Technicolor films have that same feel to it, right? right? Because it's a very specific color palette. It has a glow. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. You think about, I think about singing in the rain. Right. And so it's like you automatically feel like you're watching something just different and unique you're and you're watching I, a dream. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that's what I always love about older films, too, is that you just feel like you're getting a better quality. Even if it was a movie that wasn't seen as one of the best of that time frame, it just always feels like the the bars raised because of, you know, what it is, you know? Right. Um, yeah. Actually, you know, I lied. That's 31. No, that would no Color film stock didn't come out. Yeah, I think didn't color film stock come out in the late 30s because Wizard of Oz had it in 39. So it must have been close to that time period. I want. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I don't remember what the first. Uh, I, I would. I don't let, know what. Yeah. The first it's one. Gotta was, be, it's got to be right after that, or some point. Maybe it was just cheaper. I don't know. First year. Let me try and see. It says list of motion picture film stocks. Ugh, that's just giving me all this information I don't care oh. about. All right, well, I can't find it too quickly. Um, but anyway, so I do want to cover just one last thing yeah. uh, before we wrap things up, because I know that uh, we're, we're going a little bit on the longer side. Uh, but obviously, the Oscar nominations did indeed uh, come out, and a lot of people have been, you know, you know, talking about them. And, and as many people know, I, I don't care about the Oscars anymore. I used to. I used to love them. They used to be my thing. Uh, but now I host uh, instead my own award show, and I, and I call it the, the Raven Awards. And so I figured that uh, I would give you a little bit of a sneak peek of my favorite films of the year. I'll be doing a video on that either tomorrow or the day after. I think tomorrow I might de- do a weekend box office preview or a long-range preview for Ant-Man and uh, the third Ant-Man film. Um, but I'm planning on doing my top 10 films, my bottom 10 films. But uh, I've, I've created a PowerPoint presentation because... PowerPoints are are awesome. So are are you are you excited? Are I you am ready? excited. Tell me All more. Right. What do you think my honorable mentions are gonna be? Uh, take a guess the, of like one film that you think is gonna be on that list. The Batman, Avatar, The Way of Water, and Wow, you know you don't know me at all. All right, so <laughs> Black Phone for one. Love this movie. Yeah. I think it's great. It's just a lot of fun. And uh it was uh again, not quite good enough to make it into my top ten, but it was almost close. Like it was it's like a- top tier. On my top 10. 
Oh yeah, like it was so close to being in my top ten yeah. list. Um, and it, over time, that is a movie I could see like climbing up into the top ten. Like this right. is this is like the, the top of my honorable mentions list by by far. R R R was also a lot of fun. Did you get to see that one? I didn't. I try. I do. Okay, I started it. Yeah. And I was like, I get it, but I don't want to watch this for two yeah. hours. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. And and there's problems with ADR. Like the voice doesn't match. Like even see, when you're watching it in the original language, it doesn't like it sounds see, like it was recorded after the that's fact. all that's fun to me. I, I think oh, that I don't like that. I think that's like more in tone with what I expect from it. I just Yeah. I my brain goes numb after twenty minutes of things. Oh like yeah. That. Yeah. For sure. Uh, Father Stu. So this is one that was like one of my favorites earlier on in the year, but uh, so I still appreciate it. Still got to put it on my list, um, but ultimately did, didn't make it into the top ten. Uh, Weird, the Al Yankovic story. I like Ugh. this one so much more than I thought I would. Yeah. Uh, I watched this one with my wife because she's a Weird Al fan, and um, I love it because of just how self aware it is mm -hmm. and how it's clearly making fun of films like Rocket Man and Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I did enjoy that, too. But part of me almost wanted a straightforward Weird, weird Al story, even oh. if I know that would have been somewhat boring. Yeah, but I, I guess I was just it was just too much. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Barbarian was also uh, it was a horror film that surprised me uh, by how much I actually enjoyed it, enjoyed the twists and turns of it. But horror films just aren't really my thing and so that's why mm -hmm. it's on the honorable mentions same thing with smile too like okay. it was one where i was like i appreciated for what it was but ultimately it was you know it was fine uh so i'm gonna i'm gonna reveal to my my patreon people my uh my my 10 to was it 10 to 6 yeah 10 to 6 okay so my number 10 film what do you think it's gonna be uh i have no clue man yeah what is a woman mm. documentary <laughs> Okay. Uh, it's one of the few times ever that I've had a documentary on my list, but uh, this is from the Daily Wire, and it is on my list because I think it's one of the most important films of our time, uh, of this generation, because of all the nonsense going on with identity and like people being told they can be whatever they want to be and put chemicals into their body and like it's like it's insanity. And this is a film that I think is a cold, fresh, you know, it's 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 a cold splash of water that our society desperately needs. So is the answer the scientific? answer that you can find in any medical textbook or that's what it... you would hope but okay. the people he asks are all these people who are like you know buying into it and what's great about the documentary too is that he's asking simple questions like the right. first what is right. a woman define right. that for me right and a lot of people are using woman in the definition and they're like and he keeps saying but what is that like you keep yeah. saying woman you say I've, se someone... I've seen clips of this yeah and it's great it's so brilliant it's so well done so had to get in my top 10 because I honestly think it's just so freaking important. Number nine. This is one that was going to be an honorable mention, but because I watched it recently, thoroughly enjoyed it. Unbearable weight of massive talent. I just, again, the, the chemistry between uh, Pedro Pascal and Nick Cage is so great. Nick. Uh, yeah, Cage. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, number eight, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Mm. Did you get to see that? I got 20 minutes. Listen, I sound like such a, a, a oh. I sound crazy. I, I know it sounds like 20. It sounds minutes. like I hate movies. I got 20 minutes into it and I was like, I, I, I just don't need to see the story of Pinocchio again. I think I have Pinocchio fatigue. Oh, did you watch the Disney one? I watched 10 minutes of that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. I, I'm not even going to step near that one because I oh, heard no. it was terrible. Guillermo del Toro is definitely darker. Um, and I, I enjoyed the, the darkness of it and I appreciate the stop motion animation, but oh, it was beautiful. Um, I just, the story, I just, I, I didn't need it again. See, I never knew the original story. I, oh. I had only ever seen the Disney version. Okay. Um, and so that's why I appreciate this a lot more because I was like, oh, it's so much more, it's so much darker. Also like I, just the fact that he is a carpenter, they focus a lot more on that. He's making a crucifix for a church. So like there's all these other elements brought into it, which I right. just really, really enjoy a lot. Number seven is the outfit. This is one that was sent to me by Laura, the modern major general of the channel, as I call her. Um, she was like, you have to see this. It's, it's really good. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. Mark Rylance uh, plays a guy who um, he makes suits. And the mm -hmm. beginning of the film is him voicing over someone else, clearly, because he can't really make suits. Right. But voicing over someone like doing like the stitching and everything. And it's so calming. Oh, sounds, I would say it does sound relaxing. If you watch the first 10 minutes of anything, watch the first 10 minutes of that. It's a satisfying. Oh, it's sad. Oh, it's okay. so satisfying, bro. Okay. I'll check you it out. Yeah. It. I, I have heard of it. Yeah. All right. And then the last of the sneak peek, 13 lives. This is one. I don't think people are going to talk about. Hmm. 
13 Lives. This went under the radar. This film came out on Netflix. Stars Viggo Mortensen. It, it, it deals with a real life story about uh, it was like the soccer team that got caught in the caves during this massive flood. Mm-hmm. And this movie is it's it's a Ron Howard film for one. And again, like typically his films get a little bit more notoriety, but it was fantastic. I mean, you have the actors like in real water. Uh, you have a lot of, you know, probably stunt stunt team people doing it too. the actors themselves actually learning how to do the um, actually learning how to scuba dive as well. And it is just full of drama. It is full of like, you don't know what's going to happen, even though, again, it's based off of an actual story. If you wanted to look it up, I'm sure you could find it out. But uh, it's a movie that I think is vastly underrated and no one's talking about it. And uh, it, have you seen it? No, I've heard I've heard some good things about it. It's on Amazon Prime, maybe. Is it? Uh, I thought it was Netflix. It? it might be. I yeah, I love survival movies. Is it one of those films where it sort of makes you hold your breath? Yes. OK, great. OK, I'm going to check it, it out. I might watch it tonight. Yes, actually, I would say that because um, did you see since you're such a, a James Cameron fanboy, uh, did you ever watch Sanctum? No. OK, that's another one he did where it was like underwater. Uh, but this one's actually good. So, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. But anyway, if you want the rest of my list, you'll have just to wait for the video that I. Released. Oh, that was a tease. I thought we yeah. were going through the whole thing. No, I'm no. just gonna give a little tease to Ooh. my to my uh, people. I feel yeah. I feel a little pent up now. All yeah. right. All right. Um, but uh, with all that being said, I guess I I could also give you. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this just for you. I'm gonna do this just for you. <laughs> what are we doing? My dishonorable mentions. Oh gosh, we're gonna it's go all, through all of them. Not all, all right, of them. All right. Just the first one. Okay, oh, give me the first. Ah, what? Dang it, I did it again. Okay, there okay, we go. There we go. <laughs> Dude, it was. Did number... I tell you which finger I cut? It was last number week? eleven. Yeah. Um, it was number eleven. It almost wow. made it into the top it's ten. My top five best. Of oh the year. no, no, no! You want to see the company that it shares with? Oh, okay. Ooh, <laughs> ooh. You yeah. know what's funny about you? Yeah, I would have thought you would appreciate Violent. I didn't see it because I yeah. just looks like baby food. But Violent Night, I thought you would enjoy because it had sort of like a no body vibe to it. It did, I, but I, everything I, was so predictable child and just on yeah, regurgitated nose. baby food. Absolutely, it was so okay. on the nose. And I have so many people that are like, "Oh, I loved it. I don't know what you're talking about." And I'm like, "I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. How could you say that you liked it? Like that the whole thing is just..." ridiculous but uh right. anyway so that there's a little bit of a tease of my uh dishonorable mentions and uh i guess i'll i won't spend as much time on on my worst but i'll, I'll do the same thing my my number 10 is halloween ends G- I mean, give me oh, i yeah, agree I, it's in my top five worst give yeah, me give me the next one just give me the next one okay. move fall same right there we're, <laughs> yeah. we're together on this one we might be together ambulance uh-huh yep yep it's on there it <laughs> is so bad the cinematography alone is just oh. like Criminal. Oh, yeah. The story itself. Ooh. Yeah, that's Jurassic World Dominion. We both completely agree on this. Yeah, that was my number seven. All right. So I had 10, 9, You got seven. one more. We'll do five. Fantastic Beast. Boring. Oh, Listen, yeah. So my, bad. My girlfriend is the biggest Harry Potter fan and yep. loves the Fantastic Beast movies. And she's mm-hmm. like, she couldn't find anything great to say about it. Nope. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, it was, uh, again, I think the only reason why the film exists is because she had to write a story that makes Dumbledore gay. That's like the only thing I think about that justifies right. the story's existence. Well, they're trying really hard to cater the Harry Potter um, franchise to adults, which is yeah. what that that series is. But guess what? You took all the fun and magic out of it, and yeah. now it's like this bastardized version of what the fantastical elements were. So, yeah, what are we doing here? Yeah, because you you know what the uh, grown up fans who grew up yeah. with all the books, right, and are now adults, you know what they keep going back to the original stories you did yeah yeah exactly yeah that's what we just do that it's okay we can have some childlike wonderment yeah Yeah. absolutely well with all that being said we're gonna go ahead and wrap things up there because i know that uh i know that john's hungry yeah we're making tacos and i can smell them right now it's just like i gotta go oh yes well thank you as always for for joining me as my co-host you can of course check out john at his youtube channels john flickinger and also the flick pick uh when is your when's your top list coming out uh, maybe tomorrow. Mm. Top 10 best is coming tomorrow. 
Mm, so I can't wait it. to see it. I yeah. might barf when you mention Avatar, but you know, well, it's, you're, no. it'll cry, it'll barf, but hey, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to leave you with a smile. <laughs> oh, well, I hope, I hope so. You better yeah. leave me happy. I always um, do, but sir. Also, <laughs> but also, please check him out over on Patreon yeah. as well, where you can support him there and also get access to. Really, it's almost like two podcasts but it's two podcasts but it's almost like a first half and a second half in a lot of ways too so if you want to see like the first half of the podcast where we talk about some other stuff uh go definitely uh, check him out and support him there and yeah. uh, john thank you for always being here well thanks for having me absolutely this is probably the most this has been the smoothest scheduling too it was hey are you free yes awesome hey you still available at this time yeah i'll be right there and i was like look at this i almost pushed it back <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm not I was gonna waiting lie. for it too. I was waiting for him. I was waiting for you to either not respond or uh, be like, "Can we push it back to some?" No, other? you're lucky. Something fell through. It was an obligation that I had to do at a certain time that might have pushed it back tonight. But hey, I'm here. I'm here, baby. Yeah. If I can make and it, I'll, I'll be there. And we did it. So anyway, thank you all very much for watching. Please leave comments below with any uh, general commentary or other things you want to do. And please, if you like this, smash the like button. If you're watching this on the YouTube version for, for my members, keep it the Bifrost level above. And please tell other people, hey, this podcast, it's it's well uh, worth hanging out with. So anyway, with all that being said, you guys are amazing, beautiful people. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless. Bye-bye. And now for a huge special shout out to all of my Patreon, locals, and subscribe star members who are at the Keeper of the Bifrost level and above. Starting off with Father Luca Illick, Garrett Searles, Chris from the 80s, who you can check out over on YouTube by the same name, Hymir I. Hymason, Joe Horn, Jonathan Carney, Orange Hat Reviews, you can check out at his YouTube channel by the same name as well, Laura, the Modern Major General Story, Rosetta Allen, who you can check out at her YouTube channel, Eagle Rider, and Miss Martin Muses, which goes by the same name on YouTube. Thank you all very much for supporting me over on Patreon. And also for my subscribe star peeps, we got Matt317. Check out his Twitch channel by the same name. Fast Reaction, Mr. Roy, J Rod the Beer Guru, and ZK Man, who you can check out over at xthebounderies.co. And also, lastly, to my locals members, starting off with Miss Minnesota Hockey Fan, How About a Hockey Player, JH Schwalbach, Brett D90, and the amazing lawyer Robert Barnes. Thank you all very much for supporting me for the month of February. You guys are all fantastic if you want your name shouted out access to exclusive podcasts and exclusive giveaways check out the top link in the video description below anyway you guys are all great have a wonderful rest of your day everybody and as always god bless